Well, hello once again and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters and my ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Julia Victor. I'm glad you could join me on this lovely sunny day. You know, we are videoing this in May 2021, which has been one of the coldest months we've had for years. And yet today, right at the end of the month, on cue on Bank Holiday Monday, we have one of the loveliest days you could imagine. Forecast is 24 degrees centigrade. Now I'm filming this at 10 o'clock in the morning and already it's nice and warm. What a wonderful day and what a wonderful time to consider operating portable or mobile. You know, I've got a small mobile home here and I use it occasionally for portable ham radio operation as well as for holidays and it's a great vehicle but sometimes there are problems particularly with antennas and you know recently I've been messing about with antennas yes messing about is the right word something I really enjoy and I know a lot of you enjoy messing about with antennas and at one point I was messing about and I thought gosh this is pure magic well of course it wasn't magic it was science but at the time you think, wow, I've solved the problem. So let me tell you about this because it may help you if you're operating portable or mobile. When I first started ham radio many years ago, it wasn't long before I went mobile. The band I operated on then was 160 meters. And in fact, I don't think I could drive. I think my father was able to uh, help me by, I installed the mobile system in the family car, which um, didn't go down that well, actually. But anyway, he, um, he went with it and uh, I did operate uh, mobile on 160 meters before I could even drive. But it wasn't long before I got my first car, which was a Morris 8 Black. Um, had many, many miles on it. And um, sometimes I'd use a starting handle to start it. But that was where I put my first 160 meter mobile station permanently. I think it was a command transmitter and a command receiver. But the interesting thing was the antenna. Now, I made myself a center loaded whip out of some army surplus whips. And the center loaded coil was actually a thick piece of wood. I suppose you could call it wood dowel. It was quite thick. Where I got it from, I don't know. It was about three inches thick. And I wound a coil on it. Now, in those days, SWR meters were a luxury. I couldn't afford an SWR meter. But I did find that the way to tune that antenna to resonance was to adjust it, just the coils, or the turns on the coil, until the antenna was the most sensitive to hand capacity. And I found that... As I got nearer the frequency, so the hand capacity started further away. And that was the way I resonated my antenna, to find the point at which it was most sensitive to hand capacity. Well, today, of course, we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got SWR meters, and we've got antenna analyzers, and we've got a lot of luxuries. But it doesn't stop the problems. Now, I'm, in the past, I've spoken to many um, newcomers where they've had problems with installing their mobile antenna systems. And in this van that I've got, there's not much metal. Most of the van is, I guess, is fiberglass. The only bit of metal is the cab. And when I say the cab, it's really from the windscreen downward. So the only lump of metal I've got is the bonnet of this vehicle, which is actually a, a Fiat Ducato chassis. So not much metal work, but I thought, I wonder, because the um, bonnet is going to be coupled to the chassis, we've got the metal doors, so there's quite a bit of metal work. And whether it's either coupled DC or coupled through capacity, there's quite a lump of metal there. So I thought, well, let me see if I can get a magnetic mount to work on this vehicle. And that is where my problem started. So let me show you in more detail. One of the favorite antennas of mine 
is the Diamond Mobile Whip or Whips. They do a whole range of whips. And uh, it's rather conveniently fitted with a PL259 plug. That's the uh, PL259 plug. Interesting coil arrangement. I don't know whether you can see that, but basically the coil is wound in three sections. So this is a 20 meter whip, but it's wound in three sections. I don't fully understand it, but what I do know is that you get a much better VSWR resonance with the diamond whips than you do with things like the hamstick and so forth. So it's, uh, however they've done it, and for whatever reason they've done it, that gives an excellent match. That goes into the magnetic base, which uh, I'll talk about in a minute. The aerial is only just about one meter or so long, but if you want to make it even smaller, you can actually take this whip section off just by unscrewing it, and it makes it uh, even smaller and uh, compact to put in the boot of your car. But I want to talk about the way that it tunes, which I think is, well, it's not unique, but it's very convenient. Up here is what I call a clutch arrangement. You just loosen that, and you can then move the whip up and down inside the uh, tube there to tune it. So you just undo that, move it up and down, get it to the right position for resonance, tighten it up, job done. No Allen key, no spanners, no nothing. Now things were working against me a little bit with this assembly because although I've got a mag mount, it's rather small. It's debatable whether it will be very good at 14 megs, although I suspect that there is enough capacity there at 14 megs, certainly no lower. So I've got the metalwork of the vehicle here, which is basically the bonnet and all, and all the chassis connected to it and the doors and so forth. And that fits nicely on there, but it's a small mag mount. The reason it's a small mag mount is because that's all I had. But I was intrigued to see what would happen. Things didn't go well to start with. And it took me back to the time when I've sp spoken to several guys who've had problems with uh, matching their antenna system. Uh, it, was, it wasn't working well. It was one of those things you think, oh gosh, uh, why isn't it working? And you start to think of various reasons uh, and none of them really make complete sense. So let me, let me show you what first happened when I checked the matching of this antenna system. Having set the antenna up on the car, um, I then set my antenna analyzer up uh, to 40 megahertz. If I press the scan, we get a somewhat disappointing result, to say the least. I think you can see that on the screen. There's a dip, but it's appalling. Uh, it's, it shows resonance, but wow, that, uh, that doesn't look good at all. I'm willing to bet that some of you have had a similar problem. You set your mobile antenna system up and you get poor VSWR. How can that be? Because the antenna shows resonance and potentially it's a 50 ohm input impedance, give or take, and yet we get such an awful VSWR. You see, one of the problems is that when you're using an antenna system on a magnetic mount, or on the car itself, there is only a certain amount of metal about. And what actually happens, or what seems to happen, is that it's not only the antenna that is part of the resonant circuit, the coax cable leading to it becomes an integral part of the aerial system. And it becomes quite a complex situation. Now, as you saw in the video, I've used a small magnetic mount, and that doesn't, doesn't help the matter, but it doesn't solve the matter. If I used a larger magnetic mount, it wouldn't solve the matter completely. There is a problem there. Now, I'm going to show you how I cured the problem and then explain to you what I think was happening. Having suspected what I think the problem is, have another look at the new VSWR. Now look at the VSWR. 
look at that very distinct resonant curve an excellent match how have I achieved this and the solution was surprise surprise a ferrite ring let me show you well I simply wound a few turns around a ferrite ring this is a two and a half inch ferrite ring 43 type material and there's what four about four turns around there now if you have problems on the lower bands like 40 and 80 you would need more turns but you can see the massive difference that a simple fix like this has achieved a simple ferrite ring few turns of coax around it and I've, I've put the coax, put the ring um, at the feed end of the coax run so it's just before the coax goes into the transceiver quite amazing you see what was happening as I suspected the coax cable the coax feed was acting as part of the antenna system it was causing all sorts of problems quite a complex situation but I found time and time again that if you're struggling with matching a mobile antenna system on the HF bands, you must start off with a ferrite core on the coax feed. Basically, it's another demonstration of common mode currents flowing down the coax cable. Quite a radical difference when you add that ferrite core. Add the ferrite core and everything becomes as you'd expect it. You've got an antenna which is resonant. If you don't have that ferrite core on there, you're going to get some misleading results and you're going to spend hours, as I have done in the past as a youngster, spent hours trying to figure out why the antenna system won't match basically common mode currents flowing down the outside of the coax and basically the vehicle and the coax feed become part of the antenna system which is not what you want so i hope that's given you some encouragement uh, ferrite rings like this are available from rs components and it's well worth getting one or two of those if you're running hf then i suggest it be standard practice to put a ferrite core on the coax feed just before it enters the transceiver. You'll save yourself a lot of pain, a lot of frustration, a lot of time for very little expense. So there we are, <laughs> another video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's always been my pleasure to try and pass on information which I've um, experienced or which I, I've um, found from bitter experience because believe me, I have spent a lot of time messing about with aerials. It's great fun. and. I mentioned the word magic. You know, when something like this happens and you solve it, you think, wow, that's magic. Well, it is magic really, isn't it? Because you've been struggling for ages and you haven't solved the problem. And then all of a sudden, just like that, bit of magic. Yeah, it's science really, but I like to imagine it's magic. It's great fun. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Enjoy your ham radio. Get out in the sunshine, bit of fresh air, and in the meantime, happy operating. We'll speak soon.